And when you get into 30 days, just 30 days of prayer and fasting, God is only going to reflect what he sees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the good thing about God is he'll show you what he sees, but then he'll show you where he wants you to be. Uh -huh. yes, sir. So he wants you to examine yourself to find out, is there any sin in my life I need to get rid of? Presumptuous sin is what the book of Psalms said. I love, it left me for a minute, but it came back. Presumptuous sin in the book of Psalms. Is there any weights that are holding me back? Can I hit this weight for one minute? Do I have a weight of ambition that is not God's ambition? Well, say right there. Got me. How can you talk about that, Pastor? Because I've been there when you want something. And there's nothing wrong with what you want. But God said, that's not what I want for you. Right? Help us, Lord. Help us. Oh, God. Help us, Lord. <laughs> I will tell anybody that it was never my desire to preach or pastor. Uh -huh. Because of what I saw them do to preachers and pastors. Uh -huh. And what I saw, I did not like. And I told God, I told God, I didn't, I, I, I got into coaching, but I wasn't raised in coaching, so what I saw was more of a, the board telling the pastor what he needs to do and how much they're going to pay him. I told my, I told God, I told myself, I'll never let them dictate to me how much I'm going to pay. No, I can't be your preacher, Lord. I can't do that. My ambition was not God's ambition. And I had the wrong ambition because of what I had seen, not because how God really was. Well, and some of us don't have God's ambition for our life because we have seen some things and we think it's like that when it really isn't. And we have told ourselves, I'm not going to put myself in that position. I'm not going to go through that. I'm not going to spend all that because of what I see. God, I would rather not do what I think you're calling me to do. Let me do what I want me to do. And then you don't got to worry about me cussing nobody out, Lord. Because of other people who have given us the wrong job description for what God is asking for. Uh -huh. And we're going by the job description they've given us. And we're going by the benefit package they've given us. And God said, that's not my benefit package. That's not my job description. And if we would look at theirs, we say, yeah, I don't want nothing of that. And God said, they are misrepresenting me. My package is better than that. My job description is better than that. And what I do, I give you on-the-job training. Well, 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 you don't need no degree. I'll teach you how to do it. You don't need no BS. I'll teach you how to do it. You don't need no master's. I'll teach you how to do it. But when I get through with you, you have enough training to have a BS, a master's, and a doctorate, a PhD, and a doctor in front of your name. My God, my God. When you get through walking through the experience of working uh -huh. for the Lord, mm -hmm. I got to decide for myself yes. and find out. What are my weights? Because some of our weights are fears. Uh -huh. Some of our weights are misrepresentation of God. Some of our weights are the wrong mindset. I have to yes. examine myself. Yes. Yes. The second step in shaking things off, once I examine myself, I got to identify what's wrong. And I do that by staying in prayer. Because prayer helps me identify because I can't identify it on my own. I examine it while I'm in prayer. I identify it while I'm in prayer. Because really I'm not the one who's identifying it. Go ahead, sir. It's God who's identifying. I'm just recognizing that he is the one that's letting me know that's wrong. like a doctor when he takes your blood he looks in there, whatever he looks in there he identifies what's wrong it was already there but he's just looking through the scope and saying that's what it is and God wants you to look through his scope so he can show you what's wrong and that's 
And though we understand me, that doesn't mean you're the worst person on earth. No, all of us got some weights to lay down. Yes. And we're going to run this race the way God wants us to run it. And one thing I've learned about God, I, no matter how long I stay in this race, there's always going to be something I need to lay down. Yes. No longer until I go to glory, there's always going to be something that I got to lay down. I'm not going to reach perfection until you put me in the casket. And when I stand before him, then I'm going to be perfect because then everything is finished. Yes. But as long as I'm in this flesh, I'm going to be laying something down. Right. And the closer I get to God, the more stuff that I thought won't no problem, he's going to say, can you lay that down for a little bit? Yes. Can you put that aside for a little bit? Mm -hmm. So I have to examine myself. I have to identify. And then after I identify, I got to confess it. Yes. It's only with the confession of the mouth that you really acknowledge that yes, I have this issue. It's only with the confession of the mouth that you really identify that yes, I have this problem. That's why you. That's why people when they go to AA, they tell them we, we need you to tell us you have a heart. We ain't trying to tell you because they need to confess out of their mouth who they are. When you go to rehab because you have a drug addict, you first got to identify I have this problem. If you can't. If you can't confess that, they can't help you. It's the same principle in heaven. If you can't confess it, God can't help you. But when you confess it, you sign the document. Yes, this is me and this is what is wrong yes. with me. Uh -huh. I have to examine myself. I have to identify. And then I have to confess it. And then after I identify it, Examine myself, identify, confess it. Then I gotta forget it. Because mm. after I confess it, God is gonna work on me to get rid of it, but I can't hold myself in bondage for what God has delivered me from. Yes. So I have to examine myself. I have to identify, I have to confess it, and then I have to forget it. Because if you don't forget it, the enemy will use it against you in every area of your walk with the Lord and try to tell you you have disqualified yourself to be used by God. And as long as you are still breathing, the blood will cover everything. Yes. My God. Thank you. The Bible says the only thing is blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. And that means you have to have already experienced everything about God and you willfully, after he gives you that last chance, just say no and walk completely away. But most of us haven't even entered into that taste, that realm, to be able to just walk completely away from it. Mm. Mm. So as long as I'm alive, I still have an opportunity to get it right. Stop allowing the enemy to tell you you have disqualified yourself. Jimmy Swaggy made a whole lot of mistakes. And he may not have as many people follow him as he used to, but he still has the same anointing and preaching power that he had before he made the mistake. And if you listen to him, you'll still receive a word from God. He hasn't disqualified himself, although he may not have the same following, because people may not have the same faith in him, but he still carries the same anointing. Because the blood covered it all. And he was willing to say, Lord, forgive me. Although people may not have forgiven, God did. And still allows them to get in this world and break things down in such a way that you'll be astonished when you heard him preach the word. So I gotta shake it off. I gotta shake off some people who I don't need to be hanging with no more. I gotta shake off some bad relationships. I gotta shake off some past relationships. I gotta shake off some memories of some past relationships. You're not even in the relationship no more, but you're still reliving it every day. Memories of past relationships. You got to shake it off. Yes. I gotta shake off any ill will. I gotta shake off anything I'm holding against against anybody. I gotta shake off what I'm holding against myself. Go ahead, sir. Preach. You good right there. Some of us are holding things against ourselves. You haven't forgiven yourself. 
Now can I tell you something? If you knew now, if you knew then what you knew now, then you wouldn't make that mistake. But since you didn't, give yourself the benefit of the doubt and forgive yourself. Yes, yes, yes. Because you can't go in a time machine and go back and change it. Well, but what you can do to redeem it is I help somebody else not make the same mistake I made. Yes, yes, yes. that's it. And until you forgive yourself and shake that off, how are you going to help anybody else? Because yes. the guilt you have won't allow you to help nobody else. Uh -huh. You got to shake it off. When we really examine this thing, we'll realize that the, den the enemy has a lot of things on us, got a stick on us like stickers that he's trying to hold us down with. And when we recognize that it ain't really about all this other stuff, but it's about the, what the devil has been trying to play on my mind, I begin to take those stickers off. I begin to say, that's not me, and that's not me, and that's not me, and that's not me. So I can run this way the way God called me to run this way. You are the way you are, some of you, because you have a lot Yeah. 